before we start, just a little bit about myself. So uh, I'm Bruno Lopez. Yeah, can you hear me? Fine. Uh, at the end, can you hear me, guys? Fine. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, nice. Uh, so yeah, my, my background is in software engineering, uh, DevOps as well. And for the past year, I'm leading this cool product called TestCube that we are going to talk about. So let's start first to talk about the challenges of testing in Kubernetes. Let's do a show of hands. How many, many of you have tested inside the Kubernetes cluster or do any kinds of tests? There. Okay, pretty cool. How many of you had to automate those tests that are running there? Okay. <laughs> right, cool. So you might relate to some of these challenges we are going to talk about today. So I'm just going to list a few. So the, uh, if you use uh, different tests in Kubernetes, you might use different tools, depending on the type of test. You might try to test um, APIs, uh, UIs, and, and do a bunch of things. And one of the big problems with those tools, they are not made from the ground up to run inside a Kubernetes cluster. They are not made with Kubernetes in mind. For example, to give an example of a few testing tools, uh, Key6 is a really great tool for load testing. Uh, so PY for API testing is a, a really gold old one, Cypress for UI, Postman. So those ones are very good, and they are very good at use cases. So for example, if you want to load testing, use keysets for load testing, but they were not made exactly to run in Kubernetes right away. They give you, they help, they give you documentation, they might give you uh, Docker images on, the, on Docker app that they can use to use it as a test runner on, on your cluster, but you cannot just take a, a test in JavaScript and run it in your cluster right away. You need to do some stuff. And if, especially if you want to uh, automate it, there's some steps you have to do. You have to um, like put it in your pipeline. There, there's no different steps that you um, might have to do. And that makes your pipelines more complex. In, in a usual deployment in your pipeline, you probably have like the build steps. You might have some linters, uh, static code analysis, things like that. At some point, you deploy to your cluster. When you deploy to your cluster, it's hopefully you'll be uh, able to test it, and you want to test it, see if the applications there are running fine, you want to see the, if all microservices are connecting to each other, everything is being delivered, and depending on the environment, if you are testing in production or in the staging or whatever, uh, you might have different tests as well that you want to run. So ending, handling of these different peculiar, peculiarities and different environments makes this part more complex. Another challenge of also testing in Kubernetes is that it might, it's, it's kind of hard if you uh, have a complex structure there, have many microservices with thousands of tests or, or, and logs. Each testing tool has different, uh, different log output and m they are running in different pods and in different steps of the pipeline. That, that will become hard, especially as you scale. Um, so, and if you want to see the history, for example, you have a test that, that fails and you want to see one month ago the same logs from that, might be difficult to do that. Another thing, which is also very peculiar, is imagine that you have a, a Cypress um, a test. For, for those of you that know, know Cypress, it basically uh, allows you to run tests in the browser. So if you have an UI, you can just basically uh, simulate the human clicking on buttons and, and, and do all that simulation. And one of the things that this tool allows is to produce a video of that test. For example, you are testing your UI, and uh, basically if the test fails, if the UI is broken, you'll be able to see a video of it. And if you are running that test as a runner in Kubernetes, you now have a challenge, which is, how do I get that test artifact, which is that video, how do I save it, and I have like, I track it with the test execution and the, on my pipeline. So that's also another challenge that you, you'll have to uh, basically fix, which is how do I store, how do I get, and do I, do I store my test artifacts? The other one is uh, restricted access to your environments, especially in big corporates, you might not have the access to that cluster that you want to test. You, you, you are in charge of doing those tests or doing the code, and then you deploy to the environment, and then you want to test, but you don't have access. Uh, so yeah, so that's another challenge here. Uh, so with that in mind, the challenge is mine, that's uh, where this term of cloud-native testing comes up, which is 
you should think about your tests or your testing solutions in a way that they are cloud native. And uh, you don't need to worry about so much about all these challenges. Should be, should your test should be able to scale. You should not have really long pipelines that take a long of time because you just want to test it. Uh, for example, uh, I saw people that have like really hours of work uh, that they just need to wait because the pipelines is running and they are waiting for the test to finish. And especially now in the cloud native era and we are using Kubernetes, things should be parallelized, sh things should just scale and you should not really have you know, synchronous things that you need to wait a long time just, just to see uh, if they are working. The other thing also uh, uh, that you should have in mind is flexibility. You should not be very tied to any CI/CD system in per particular, or, or or even testing tool, or it should not block you. Your your pipeline should not block you from trying new tools, from adding more tests or changing things. It should be still very flexible. If somebody says, "Oh, I, I really found this new tool, and I want to add a new test to our uh, pipeline," it should not be a it should be very straightforward. It should be very, very fast to do that. And you, should, you don't need to talk with maybe with your DevOps team or, or with different people just to add, to add that. Uh, so you should not lose flexibility with that. And, and the last point from, from these uh, three pillars is uh, automation. Automation is, things, is something that you know, should, should kind of come out of the box. You should not really worry so much about automation. Things should just be easy to automate. And you, you don't, usually it is, is like repetitive work just to automate things and, and things should just work. So that's basically the, the third pillar uh, of cloud native testing. So yeah, with all of this in mind, uh, I wanted to, to introduce you um, our, our open source project called TestCube that basically tries to solve all of these challenges that you just saw. Uh, so we are, uh, the Kubernetes native testing framework, so which is basically um, uh, tries to take all of these tools and, and combine them together. They're open source, as I said, and part of CNCF. And you really focus on that test automation part, management, and also visualization of, of all your tests that run in the um, Kubernetes cluster. So what can it do for you? Uh, so uh, as I said, mentioned before on those tools, for you to automate them, you, most of the times, you need to write complex scripts, you need boilerplate. You cannot just take one test and, oh, just run it and, and automate it. There's, there's things that need to happen. Needs, uh, need to, you need to do some code on your pipeline, whatever, if it's GitHub Actions, Jenkins, whatever it is, you'll need to do s something there to, to add your test logic there. And also, you need to use Docker uh, images or any sort of container image if you want your um, test to, to run inside the Kubernetes cluster because everything runs inside the container, of course. So we also need to provision that uh, test uh, um, executor. Uh, yeah, so circumventing restricted environments, just gonna go past this because I, I talked about it before. Artifact storage, scaling, you know, making uh, your, your life is, uh, if you are a tester, you should focus really on testing, on, on, uh, to, on writing the tests, know what what microservice to write or which things you are need to add more tests of and should not worry about basically the manual stuff or like just basically the techn technical part there are these um there are a lot of patterns across many projects that everybody solves them uh, in a custom way and there are tools like these ones that can just make it you know in a general way can can solve it uh, very easy for you so one of, one of the ways you can define tests uh, in, in Kubernetes is via CRDs. So TestCube allows you to just define in a YAML your tests and then takes uh, care of them. That's basic, basically uh, defined. So it just allows you to take any tool. These ones come out of the box. If you want to add more, you can just create that executor, contribute it or use it for yourself and also your, your tool becomes supported. Um, so to, to give an example of a CI-CD system that uh, it is has more steps uh, and doesn't use in this example test cube and the other one that does. So um, a simple uh, a simple pipeline you see here on the left. So build here in the middle. Usually we have a lot more. Uh, let me take this. Can you hear me? Yes. So here usually you have uh, more steps, like linters, because such uh, coding analysis, maybe unit tests uh, for sure. Then you deploy to an environment. 
this is an example of one environment, you can have more, and then you have different steps that you could uh, run, like different API uh, tests, UI tests, could be load, uh, you know, can be anything, security, whatever, you mention it. So if you want to add more uh, steps here or different environments, you need to add that logic to your pipeline. Uh, in the example here, I just just going to walk here and show you. You can basically declare your tests as CRDs. So this is a Kubernetes cluster. You can de declare them here. Uh, test cube is prepared to run them for you. So as you declare them, they be they become st uh, part of your cluster. They are they are part of that state, and your pipeline becomes very uh, um, like it becomes very simple to use. You don't have any uh, scripts there or uh, like it's just uh, logic to configure things. You just one of your steps to fail if something's not working. You can just say, for for example, test cube run my test or my test suite, and your pipeline will fail if you wanted to. And but everything, all the complexity lives here and not here. So your pipelines uh, don't have all of that cumbersome uh, scripts that that you might need to code. This, this is hard. Okay. So let me just do a quick demo for you so you can see it happening live. Yes. So here, I just wrote here a really small script. It's a key sex test. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show it to you. This is, is a, a key six test that uh, fails half of the times. So, that, so uh, it just does a, a load test on this URL, and after th half of the times you, you run it, it they, there's a random here, a random number. Half of the times you'll fail, half of the times it will pass. So you can use test cube using the UI or the CLI. I'm just gonna do the UI here because it's uh, more clear to you to understand what's happening. If I use the CLI, maybe less clear. So uh, here you can see basically all the tests inside your cluster. Let's let's go through the flow of adding one test, and then I'm gonna go through uh, through basically all the rest. So let's just start with one simple test um, right now. So you can basically create a test in your cluster. Uh, as I mentioned before, this is a Kubernetes resource, so basically it is a front end to your cluster. Things will be saved in your cluster. So let's say I'm gonna create a test called uh, CD Summit. Here, uh, by the way, this is a, a live environment, a demo one. So right now, if you want to go there and mess up my presentation, you can. Uh, so here, you basically s select the type of test uh, you are want to run. So all the the tools that you um, basically configured uh, to uh, to run and test cubes allows out of the box many. Uh, so I'm going to select key six, and I'm going to select uh, where's the test source. Uh, for example, if you, um, you should have your tests in Git, so for example, oh, thank you, yeah, much better. So you can define a CRD in your cluster that fetches the test data and the test content from your GitHub repo, and they should live there. So I'm, I'm doing, doing this manually, I'm creating a te test manually for your cluster, but hopefully in an automated way, you have this running on your uh, repo. So let's just for the purpose of the presentation, I'm going to just upload a file here. And k6 test random is the f the um, that uh, test uh, I just showed you that fails after times. And I just defined that test on my cluster here as a CRD. So this is like a YAML. This is a CRD of a type test. You see the metadata in the namespace. You have labels. Just no, just like a normal Kubernetes resource. Um, and now, like, uh, uh, the CRD is defined there. Uh, TestCube picks it up. Uh, there's the, um, the operator, and I'm just going to schedule, like, a bunch of times. I know, 26 should be enough to nook the server. And uh, so basically now they are running in parallel as uh, Kubernetes jobs. And basically uh, some of them are passing, some of them are failing. So basically the, the pods now... So what test cube does? It schedules the jobs, it tracks what it's doing, and, and sees like if the pod 
the test failed or, or, or the job failed, it will mark the test as failed, or if it passed, it marks as passed. And also fetches the logs from that uh, executor. And the, the, so you can see the logs of what happened there. Uh, yeah, so, so that's, that's mainly what you do when you are trying to run a test. You, you can quickly like, come here. If you have an automated system, you can, can just see it live. For example, if you have a pipeline that is triggering your tests, you can actually see it. So you can just use this hash part here and basically have a pulse on okay, which tests are passing, which tests are failing here. Um, so it gives you that that uh, high level view and also metrics. So one, one thing I was not for, I was forgetting to mention is that um, you also want to have metrics about the, your tests. If you have a, a cluster and applications here and you are develop, developing that for one year or more, um, now knowing if, if your tests you now fail a lot or pass a lot, also very interesting for you. Um, so just just a, a quick uh, summary of, of what you can do here. Uh, basically, have tests, test suites. One thing also that just got released like a few days ago. So I'm not going a, doing a demo right now because I didn't prepare it. But I, I just wanted to show you as well. Is I, I showed you an example of how a pipeline can trigger tests. But imagine that you have your pipeline just deploying your application, and then TestCube knows when to run your test. So in this example, TestCube could listen to resources on your cluster. For example, it could listen to a, a pod. When a pod with a certain label is modified, you can tell TestCube to run any type of test that you're defining there. So basically, your tests are uh, like you can just make the list of which events or cluster events you want to listen. And then the test cube will run this test for you. So you don't even need to add any step on that pipeline because uh, no, this is intelligent enough to, to see, okay, this event changed, let me run the test. And for example, if you want then a message on Slack or anything, you can just uh, implement webhooks here uh, and then it will just send uh, those messages. So um, so yeah, so that's, that's basically it. Um, thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, question. So I have a, actually a couple of questions. Are these tests uh, specific to main spaces, or can they be workable? Uh, so that's a good question. So you mean you do, right now you only you use one test cube installation per cluster. So basically, you don't. It's not namespace scoped. It's, it's for the full cluster. So all the namespaces. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So basically, you can see the history and also the um, the metrics, and also like you can have time frames and, and yeah, and all of that. Uh, uh, something. So for example, if you want to parameterize your tests, you can also pass um, environment variables. So you have like secrets. You can yeah, and and then I they get mounted on your uh, pod as environment variables, and then then you can pick it up as well. Mm-hmm, yeah. Cool, uh, yeah, thank you, uh, yes? What happens with test space? Uh, does, it, uh, does it have any kind of like rollback or? So we have uh, web books, yeah. so you can implement, if you want to have some logic around that, so TestCube will not do anything, just, re just tells you that the test failed. But if you have any other mechanism that when it receives a message that this test failed, you want to do any action, you, you could. should run on those environments, but even production. I feel like you should run some tests even on, on production as well. So that's also important. Maybe not the same of, not the same types of tests, but, but some of them, yeah. I think we have like 50 parts per mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a lot, yeah, pretty cool. Uh, 
can you you can schedule the test. You can have cron jobs. So it's not in the UI yet. It's like it's for maybe in two releases, but uh, using the the terminal. So let me just show you. Like you can just say test cube create test, uh, and then you can pass. I don't know which flag it is. Let me see if I can find it. There's there's a flag here somewhere. So basically, put a cron tab. You know that. Uh, is it here? No, you found it? Okay, so yeah, you just put that and test you will run it, whatever you tell me. Yes. Uh, sorry, can you repeat, if you, do you get problems if you what? Yeah, that, that's really a great question. So uh, from uh, our community and our users, we have m many companies that do it different way. The way we rec recommend is to save in TCRDs as part of your GitHub repo. So they are version track there, and then you synchronize, for example, using uh, Argo CD or any type of CI CD. It can be actual uh, GitHub Actions as well if you want to, uh, and then you deploy that to your cluster. Some people do. Some people put it in the Yelm chart and deploy everything. Sometimes you have to. Yeah. Yeah, Yelm is a nice tool to deploy this as well. Cool. Uh, yes. Um, you know, yes, no, <laughs> kinda. <laughs> so here is a team. So yeah, also clap to the team. <laughs> uh, yeah, so there's um, we have some data there. Um, it's not fully cost customizable. We are looking into there's a, something called CD events. So I'm not sure which one of you is involved in that project. I talked with some guys over email, um, and I'm really interested in that to see how it would it apply here. Uh, but right now it's not fully customizable. There's some customization still. So, uh, so like can you test how long they um, you know, from from release of one, how like how long uh, it took that action on to like we only get like fifteen milliseconds. Fifteen milliseconds. So if you were asking if you could track a, a, a test that takes 15 milliseconds? Or the execution oh, you mean if you have timeouts uh, and you just... Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you can have timeouts, so it's on this release, so we are on 1.7, we are releasing timeouts and abort. Yeah, so it's, it's not possible. Uh, it will be possible like in a week or two. We're running a bit of dev Mm-hmm. So if a replica sets, I mean, you have a test that tests if replica sets fail. Yeah. Uh, so you you would have to write that test somehow, like just verifying that. Yeah. So basically, uh, wh what you have to do is just come here, you create a, a test that tests that, and then just run it. Okay. Seems that's it. Pretty cool. Thank you very much.